Namo Didafa. Thank you for joining me for a daily practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The first mindfulness training. Aware of the suffering caused by the destruction of life, I vow to cultivate compassion and learn ways to protect the lives of people, animals, plants, and minerals. I'm determined not to kill, not to let others kill, and not to condone any act of killing in the world, in my thinking, or in my way of life. For our Dharma lesson, we've been reading Pure Land Zen, Zen Pure Land, the letters of Patriarch King Kuang. We're continuing today in the first letter. If illness and suffering become unbearable, in addition to reciting the Buddha's name morning and night and dedicating the merits toward rebirth in the Pure Land, you should call wholeheartedly upon the Bodhisattva Kuan Yin of Lakitishvara with her silent vow to rescue sentient beings, the Bodhisattva appears throughout the worlds of the Ten Directions. If in times of crisis a person can keep reciting her name and revere her, she will respond according to the circumstances, enabling him to escape suffering and achieve happiness. Although Buddha recitation is simple, it's very deep and encompassing. The most important thing is to be utterly sincere and earnest. For only then will your thoughts merge with those of Amitabha Buddha and will you reap true benefits in this very life. If you're lazy and lax, lacking even the least, least bit of reverence and awe, you may sow the seeds of future liberation, but you must still bear the inconceivable evil karma stemming from disrespect and over-familiarity. Even if, thanks to residual merits, you escape the evil realms, you will still find it difficult to join the ocean-wide Lotus Assembly. Nowadays, there are quite a number of scholars who study Buddhism. However, almost all of them simply read the words of the sutras and commentaries, seeking arguments and rationalizations to prove that they are versed in the Dharma. Those with the sincerity and devotion to cultivate according to the Dharma are few indeed. I've always said that to reap the real benefit of the Dharma, you should approach it with a truly reverent mind. One-tenth of reverence and devotion annihilates one-tenth of afflictions and evil karma and increases merit and wisdom by one-tenth. And this applies to two-tenths, three-tenths, or total reverence and devotion. Conversely, the more lax and disrespectful you are, the more obstructions and evil karma you develop, resulting in a corresponding decrease in merit and wisdom. How sad it is. When you meet with the other laymen, you should counsel them along these lines. This would be a great Dharma gift. May all beings be well, may all beings be happy, may all beings be at peace. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you for joining me today.